Welcome to the ABC of the Animal Kingdom. Sea anemones are a group of predatory marine animals of the order Actiniaria. They are named after the anemone, a terrestrial flowering plant, because of the colorful appearance of many. Sea anemones are classified in the phylum Cnidaria. As Cnidarians, sea anemones are related to corals, jellyfish, tube-dwelling anemones, and hydra. Sea anemones are found in both deep oceans and shallow coastal waters worldwide. The greatest diversity is in the tropics, although many species adapted to relatively cold waters. Most species cling onto rocks, shells, or submerged timber, often hiding in cracks or under seaweed, but some burrow into sand and mud. A typical sea anemone is a sessile polyp, attached to the surface beneath it by an adhesive foot, called a basal or petal disc with a column-shaped body topped by an oral disc. Most are from 1 to 5 centimeters, 0.4 to 2.0 inches, in diameter and 1.5 to 10 centimeters, 0.6 to 3.9 inches, in length. However, some are very large, Artisana columbiana and Stichodactyla mertensii, can exceed a meter in diameter, and Matridium farsimon, a meter in length. The column or trunk is generally more or less cylindrical, and may be plain and smooth, or may bear specialized structures. These include solid papillae, adhesive papillae, synclides, and small protruding vesicles. The oral disc has a central mouth, usually slit-shaped, surrounded by one or more whorls of tentacles. The tentacles are armed with many nidocytes, cells that are both defensive and used to capture prey. Nidocytes contain stinging nematocysts, capsule-like organelles capable of everting suddenly, giving the phylum Cnidaria its name. Each nematocyst contains a small venom vesicle filled with actinotoxins, an inner filament, and external sensory hair. A touch to the hair mechanically triggers a cell explosion, which launches a harpoon-like structure that attaches to the organism that triggered it and injects a dose of venom in the flesh of the aggressor or prey. The venom is a mix of toxins, including neurotoxins, which paralyzes the prey so the anemone can move it to the mouth for digestion inside the gastrovascular cavity. Actinotoxins are highly toxic to prey species of fish and crustaceans. Sea anemones have what can be described as an incomplete gut. The gastrovascular cavity functions as a stomach and possesses a single opening to the outside, which operates as both a mouth and anus. Most sea anemones are harmless to humans, but a few highly toxic species, notably Actinodendron arboreum, Philodiscus simoni, and Stichodactyla species, have caused severe injuries and are potentially lethal. Sea anemones are typically predators that can capture and accommodate larger animals such as crabs, dislodged mollusks, and even small fish. Stichodactyla helianthus is reported to trap sea urchins by enfolding them in its carpet-like oral disc. A few species are parasitic on other marine organisms. One of these is Pichia quinquacapitata, the larvae of which develop inside jellyfishes, feeding on their gonads and other tissues before being liberated into the sea as free-living juvenile anemones. Many sea anemones form a facultative mutualistic relationship with certain single-celled algae species, which reside in the animal's gastrodermal cells, especially in the tentacles and oral disc. These algae may be either zooxanthellae, zooplorelli, or both. While sea anemone benefits from the products of the algae's photosynthesis, namely oxygen and food in the form of glycerol, glucose, and alanine, the algae are assured a reliable exposure to sunlight and protection. In the aggregating anemone, Anthopleura elegantissima, the color of the anemone is largely dependent on the proportions of algae present. Several species of fish and invertebrates live in symbiotic or mutualistic relationships with sea anemones, most famously the clownfish. Oh, who is this? 
I'm Nemo. Well, Nemo, all new explorers must answer a science question. Okay. You live in what kind of home? In a nemanini. A Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. The symbiont receives the protection from predators provided by the anemone's stinging cells, and the anemone utilizes the nutrients present in its feces. Other animals that associate with sea anemones include cardinal fish, juvenile three-spot dacillus, incognito goby, juvenile painted greenling, various crabs, such as Inachus phalangium, Mithraculus synctomanus, and Neopetralists, shrimp and opossum shrimp, such as certain alpheus, lebius, periclimines, Thor, Heteromyces, and Leptomyces, and various marine snails. Sea anemones tend to stay in the same spot for weeks or months at a time. However they can move, being able to creep around on their bases. This gliding is so slow as to be almost imperceptible to the naked eye. Gonactinia prolifera is unusual in that it can both walk and swim. It can walk by making a series of short, looping steps, like a caterpillar, attaching its tentacles to the substrate and drawing its base closer. Swimming is done by rapid movements of the tentacles beating synchronously like or strokes. Stomphia coccinia can swim by flexing its column. Sea onion anemone inflates and casts itself loose, adopting a spherical shape and allowing itself to be rolled about by the waves and currents. Certain anemones, such as Adamsia caliactus and Neoaptasia, live and transport on the shell of the hermit crab or marine snails. Bundiopsis or Triactus anemones are carried in the claws of the Libya boxing crabs. The sexes in sea anemones are separate in some species while other species are sequential hermaphrodites, changing sex at some stage in their life. Both sexual and asexual reproduction can occur. In sexual reproduction, males may release sperm to stimulate females to release eggs, and fertilization occurs, either internally in the gastrovascular cavity or in a water column. The fertilized egg develops into a planula larva, which drifts for a while before sinking to the seabed and undergoing metamorphosis into a juvenile sea anemone. Sea anemones have great powers of regeneration and can reproduce asexually by budding, fragmentation, or longitudinal or transverse binary fission. Some species such as certain anthopleura divide longitudinally, pulling themselves apart, resulting in groups of individuals with identical coloring and markings. If you love dogs and cats as much as we do, stay tuned on Sundays. We will also post new videos about wild animals and insects every Thursday. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell, so you do not miss any of our incredible videos.